Um, today, I've been practicing the Zelter Concerto. Carl Zelter is one of my favorite classical composers who wrote viola concertos. Along with the Stamitz and the Hofmeister, the Zelter is one of the most important concertos in our developing a classical sound and approach to uh, technique and lyricism in the classical mold. So today I thought I would talk a little bit about the first movement. So one of the challenges about this concerto is the very opening is in quarter notes and it's essentially an arpeggio in E flat. It doesn't look very interesting when you look at the music all on its own. And so you have to create a lot of shape. And as I've been talking about in my other videos, we make shape and volume increase and decrease and line with certain tools at our disposal. One is the vibrato, one is the bow speed, one is the contact point. All of these things in combination can help us create a very good line. If I was to play the opening of this concerto without any sense of line, it would sound like this. <laughs> So by itself, it kind of sounds a little silly. I think the first thing we have to do to make this a successful opening is to imagine what kind of statement are we trying to say. What is the character of this opening? I think there are some keys in the score. He writes forte. He also has um, an accompaniment that's very heroic. There's a very fast and exciting orchestration that leads us into this opening. When you put those together, that informs me to think that this should be a very bold and strong opening. So that means I'm going to give a very full-bodied vibrato. <laughs> That's the first step for me, to get this piece to sound more heroic. The other thing is that even though there are not crescendos and diminuendos written here, it is implied when a phrase goes up, you want to play with more line. You want to play as if you're climbing a mountain and you're finally coming to the summit and you can see this amazing view. So if you try to turn music into an image or a story, it really helps to inform the way we play. So now I'm going to add more phrasing through my bow usage. You'll see that I use some bow, and then I'll use more bow, and then I'll use less bow. So I put all these things together. <laughs> The next passage is oftentimes very scary for, for a student or a professional because then we have these 16th notes that come out of nowhere. So what we have to do is we have to make these notes just as musical as the preceding passage. Now there are many things that go into making this passage clear. Of course we want to practice it very slowly but not just slowly, musically as well. That means making sure that we use the same amount of bow in real time that we will use when we practice it slowly. We also want to make sure that we add the right phrasing when we're doing it slowly. So I add slight accents before each group of four that's going to do two things. One, it's going to make it clear to hear when I'm playing fast. Also, it's going to help me from rushing. I don't want to rush or play this out of control. I want to be very controlled when I play these passages. Also, I want to observe the same idea of line. We have this half note that leads into the 16th, so I want to grow with intensity 
as if there's some real drama that leads in to these notes going down a hill. So I'm going to begin with the vibrato a little narrow and then wide it, widen it. I'm also going to use more bow speed at the end to create a crescendo. Remember, we don't want to press. We don't want to do this. We want to do this. It actually makes more sound and more projection by using fast bow speed and vibrato, not by pressing. And then when we put it together, it'll hopefully sound something like this. This next melody is very beautiful and very lyrical. There are some beautiful jumps between octaves in half notes, and we want to make this as lyrical as possible, like a singer. There are many parts of this phrase that need to be looked at carefully. The first is these two half notes. You play the first one in first position, and the next half note is way up here in third. And the real question is how to get those two notes to sound organic, vocal, connected. If you were to sing these two notes, you wouldn't go da da, you go da. There's a natural portamento or a natural graceful traveling from one note to another, which we have to try to emulate on the viola as well. One thing that will help that is understanding which finger does the shift. We're going from one to four, but in actuality, we're really going from one to one, which is the third position, G, and the next note is the same G, but an octave higher. So we want to practice it slowly like that. And then the faster you get, the less you'll hear it. But I'm still doing it. You can see. See, it's right there. My finger is there, even though you're not hearing it. So that's the first thing, to achieve a technically smooth transition from one note to the next using the proper shifting finger and also create a line by vibrating more fully on the high note to take us to the next measure. Then he has a variation based on the opening theme. But then he makes a very cute variation, which is in piancimo, with a different bowing. For this, it's very challenging because you have three notes on a slur and then one note on an up bow. And if we don't use our bow wisely, we will have this problem. Right? So we have to save our bow on the first three notes. Not, but less bow. And then the next note we lift off and travel back to the frog. The next section is very exciting and it's a three lines of exciting 16th notes. The temptation here is to play it too fast and then what happens is you get a train wreck. Like that, and it's not the right character, it's actually too fast. So again, what we do is we practice these very technically fast sections slowly and find the music. We're always trying to find the phrasing, find the music, find notes that we can vibrate. I did when I practiced it slowly was I used the correct part of the bow. I didn't use more bow simply because it's slow. It's really important to use only the amount of bow that you're going to play it fast. Also, I used vibrato for certain notes that I want to bring out. These two things will really help you play it musically and steadily. So here it is a little faster. 
And then we play even faster. I still try to bring out the vibrato. That's about as fast as you need to play it. Remember, the opening tempo is this. So it's not crazy fast. So this is just a couple of the ideas I think you need to think about when you're practicing this classical concerto by Zelter.